Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever felt the deck was rigged against you, <laughs> then do we have the Awakened Show for you. Today I'll be speaking with Suzanne Giesman, founder and teacher of The Awakened Way, a former U.S. Navy commander who served as a commanding officer and aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on 9-11 and the author of at least 13 books on connecting with spirit. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about free will, destiny, angels, and cosmic setups, and if we can connect with the other side to change our path. That plus we'll talk about Robin Williams and doves, medallions and receivers, ETs and the Navy, and what in the world beams of light and Nelly have to do with anything. Gotcha. So welcome back to the show, Suzanne. Are you ready to shine? Oh, oh Michael, how could I not be in, sitting in this energy field? Wow. Woohoo! Woohoo! So... Uh, when I was, I, I got a couple masters a long, long time ago, distant galaxy, another planet, so to speak. And um, one of them was a computer degree. And there was a gentleman there who had worked on Navy commander groups on the uh, displays and specifically on um, determining whether something was friendly, whether it was not, and what actions to take. Kind of a virtual reality of looking at reality of what's going on. So I think this is very particular to you who has been a Navy commander and has looked at all of this. Are we living in a virtual reality? I asked my team of spirit guides that question and they said yes and no, that absolutely it is a, a projected reality. Not ex The reason it was yes and no is it's not exactly like computer games. They want us to know that it's not like some non-emotional computer that's running the whole show. It's all under, the underlying essence is love and connection. So that takes the, the computerized feel out of it, but absolutely a projection that is being programmed from a higher level. And that really does explain these amazing connections that we can experience with the non-physical realms. So, so that really gets to the concept coming from the Bible, and it's been written in, in uh, uh, hermetics for thousands of years, as above, so below. It doesn't mean that life isn't real on some level, but it's being played at a higher level, and we're reflecting it down here. Yeah, and just understanding that makes it so much easier for us to know that at any time, we are the ones at another level of our own self that is making some of these decisions. So we can always rise above the drama when it gets to be too much as the players and see it from the higher perspective. So then that begets the question. And I had a, a, a dear, dear friend and coaching client who passed away, crossed over the veil a few years ago. And she always said that she was upset with her spirit for putting her through these situations. Is our spirit us or can we be upset with our spirit going, why are you doing this to me? The human side gets upset. That's the whole thing. When you, when you think there's a problem right away, that means you're in human mode because the soul knows all is in perfect order. So it's like an instant indicator, oh, I need to just shift my perspective. Very cool. So that begets the really big picture question for today. And I've watched, we're both watching so much going down at the end of 2020 on what has been a, for evolutionary point, I, I don't want to make light of it, we'll call it an incredible year. This has definitely been a year of breaking loose the old to rebirth, to build something new. Is everything going on, what's going on in your life, going on in my life, everybody who's listening, a cosmic setup? Oh, what a question. It's... I always check in with my guides and the answer I get to that immediately is it's an opportunity for growth, but it's also the direct outgrowth of the process of evolution. It's not as if some higher being said, let's give them a pandemic. Things happen. That's a direct outgrowth of the, the rule set of this earthly reality is that we have disease and illness and now we get to choose how are we going to deal with that. Ooh, I like that word choose. We've had on a uh, two-time Nobel Peace Prize uh, nominee, Dr. Irvin Laszlo, several times on the show, who's talking about a bifurcation of a humanity, of a we get to choose 
which direction we want to go. And so that's not predetermined. That's up to us is what your guides are saying. Absolutely. How else are we going to evolve if not by our choices? And humans learn by trial and error. Heavy dose on the error side of things, perhaps. Yeah, lately. Mm -hmm. When we... All right. So this morning, I had a beautiful interview with Dr. Joe Vitale. Except that the internet, which had been fully stable and perfect last night, was... Slow is the best way to describe it. <laughs> and yet we check all our systems. We do all of these things and it didn't work out as great as I'd like. Still a beautiful interview. And the question that pops up that I immediately say no to, but I want to throw it to you, is are we being tested by the universe? Wow. The answer that I get is, this life is one big test. We come here knowing that things will not always go the way we want them to. Mm -hmm. And the test is, how are you going to respond to every challenge that comes up? And the, the choice is always with love or fear. So are you going to respond with peace and knowing that all is in perfect order? If I just slow down, take mm -hmm. a deep breath, the way to deal with this will come into my awareness from that higher level? Or am I going to stay in human mode, fight it, not allow things to go wrong, and have chaos? Thank That's you. the test, always. It's interesting because if you go, and, and I'm in California for the winter right now, and California is having an a, extreme lockdown, and it's a, it's a very interesting, we'll put it that way, an interesting situation right now. And if you go on the news or whatever to see if even your grocery store is still going to be open, hmm. you feel a quickening, a spinniness that starts to spin out of control if you don't step back and unplug from it. And yeah. what do you think is going on and why you said those, those words, my favorite words right now, slow down? I love that you said it's interesting because the guidance I got just in the last two days for myself in meditation was that when somebody around me expresses anger or any emotion that I know is not in alignment with the soul until yesterday, there's a part of me that intellectually knows, okay, everybody's allowed to have their own feelings, but emotionally I feel that and at a deeper level than even intellectually, part of me goes, no, we have to be responding with love. But that's the human side of me. So that quickening is just an attention getter and a chance when slowing down to breathe and say, isn't that interesting? So the, the emotions, the feelings that in the past I might have said, oh, this shouldn't be happening or, oh, that person shouldn't be angry is actually an opportunity to say just simply, isn't that interesting that I'm feeling these emotions and something inside me says I shouldn't be feeling them when they just are flowing right through me. You acknowledge them, you allow them. By saying, isn't that interesting, you go to neutral and now you can respond from the higher level and not the robotic player responses that we're all so used to making. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. When we go to, isn't that interesting? Can we then plug into spirit? Like you say, I'm continuously checking into the guys. Have you just built the space, the vessel? That's the whole point of, isn't that interesting? It gives you this moment of neutrality and pause. And now, just because you took that pause, you are aware and you're acting consciously. I call it the lucid zone. Mm -hmm. I'm now able to make choices from a higher place. Even, like you said, check in, ask my guides, is there a better way? What's the best thing for me to do right now if it's not coming to me automatically? Thank you. I'm a big angels guy. You're a big angels gal. How do we, and I wanted to talk about angels and the holidays and free will and destiny, how do we particularly when we are so, even if you put us, yourself by Joshua Trees in the desert, which is the beautiful retreat center where we're at, it's still hard not to be bombarded 
with information and information overload right now. How do we cultivate the connection, especially at this time? By unplugging from all that information. We have all the information we need coming at us right here Mm -hmm. from the higher levels. It's stunning how much you can discern. It's the human that says, I have to watch the news. I have to be informed. Hey, I taught political science at the Naval Academy. And, you know, some things never change. So I check the headlines. I see that the world is still here. I see what's going on. And then I unplug. And I get the insights from higher consciousness. And, ooh, it's peaceful. Thank you. You, you. you have a class going on right now. And there's a term, blessed. I believe that you use for connecting. Can you share with us a few steps of how we can connect? Yeah, the class is in soul to soul communication. And the premise of the whole class is that we are souls here and now. This is what we've been talking about, the higher self, the soul. The part that's really running the show down here at this level. We are the humans that enact that that scenario. And the method you're talking about of connecting, it's actually bless me, a seven step acronym where each letter stands for a, a step in the process of attuning to higher consciousness. So, I mean, real short version of that is it entails be, breathe, three nice, slow belly breaths to slow down everything. L is whatever it takes to lift your vibration, and the fastest way is gratitude. Just sit quietly and think about what you have to be thankful for. That lifts your vibration. E is taking a nice deep breath, and on the E, expanding breath, you expand your energy field out until you're in your now limitless state. And then the S, the first one stands for surrender your story. I'm no longer Suzanne acting out a story here. I'm just being this awareness, this aware state, my pure state of being. The second S stands for shift. Shift to being aware now of in this state of awareness, what is coming into awareness. M is merge with any information or beings that you become aware of now that you've shifted and e is experience whatever's meant to happen right now in this expanded state ideally you'd run through that in about five minutes and then stay in the expanded state as long as you want because that five minutes of preparatory stages Mm b-l-e-s-s-m slows everything down and you just slip into that state do it often enough and boom you just connect awesome 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 Woohoo! that was a lot (laughs) you expanded your arms while you're doing this and it looks like you have angel wings and then you use the term this is on purpose for our show today and it's christmas coming up so yeah you use the term merge which was fascinating What does it mean to merge? Well, I want to tune into someone in the spirit world. This body gets in the way. So I've surrendered my focus on my whole physical body. I know I'm an energetic field of vibration, of consciousness. Any other soul I want to tap into, whether in the spirit world or in the physical world, is also an energetic field. So merge simply means I am using intention to join our fields and become aware of any information from that apparently separate other field that will serve the greater good. So it's like at a museum, if you walk into a museum and you find one of those dioramas and you push the button and all the lights light up to the spot you want to go to, with intention you just say, let's merge and become one field and you just light up a connection to that field and instantly you're connected. Beautiful. And during this time, are there, there are no rules, there's no anything that we need to do, but... Maybe if we haven't made that connection and now we're feeling, it's not just holidays. It's holidays where we might be locked up. We might be separate from our loved ones. We might not be able to on and on and on it goes. 
where is a great place? What's a great, great subway car <laughs> to get on to now as far as uh, connecting with the angels and connecting with the guides? Oh, my gosh. Well, the, the prerequisite for connecting is understanding you are a soul. So the, the basic practice is to, if you want to use a system like the Bless Me Method, just spend time in that state of pure being. Because from that state, anything is possible. But if you don't know what that feels like, then the connection may or may not happen. So that's why I have a, on my website, there's a gifts page, SuzanneGiesman.com yeah. slash gifts. And it's full of meditations, the whole process that we just went through to help people learn what that feels like and then have experiences themselves. Thank you. Thank you. So going back to free will and destiny and talking about setups, when we start to get into this, we'll call it bless me state or, or um, it might be what you call the lucid zone, we start to see synchronicities. We start to see connections. It's these setups that you talk about. What's going on? Oh, what's going on is that just because we think about those across the veil doesn't mean they're not already thinking about us. Many of our brilliant thoughts are not our own, Michael. They're put there by beings who aren't in a body and they want us to take certain action. We have a thought, oh, I think I'll go make a phone call to somebody. And then you find out that that initiates some great contact or some great connection. Well, where did that idea come from? Most likely from somebody across the veil that knew that you two coming together here in a physical form would be magical. So I, I have setups that happen all the time in my work as a medium when I do readings for people. Sometimes I do a reading because I know the reading is set up. Sometimes in the middle of a reading, I realize we were set up, but it happens all the time. Is there one story that you'd want to share on a setup recently? Oh my gosh. One was when I went to Unity Village, the Unity World Headquarters, in the middle of the country. Yep. And I was just checking out the campus for a retreat that I'm going to do in the future. And as I was leaving my RV to go to the campus, I heard, take your tape recorder. I thought, why would I take my tape recorder? But I've learned to say yes. So I just threw it in my bag and I get to campus, I step out of my car and there's a woman there and she looked at me and I looked at her and I said, I know you. And she goes, yeah, I, I was at one of your workshops a long time ago. Oh, well, what are you doing here? And she said, well, I'm, I'm here on a silent retreat of my own to honor my child who passed four years ago this date. And all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if this is a setup. But we just chatted a little and she walked off her way. I went my way and I immediately heard, you're supposed to do a reading for my mom. Now, I can't sense male or female, but she's gone now. And I just silently said, well, if I am, you better put her back in my path. I went to lunch, came out of the cafeteria on campus, and here she comes. Turns out she'd been sitting on a bench just reading, and all of a sudden these ants came out of nowhere and started biting her feet. And she said, I better get up and move. So she started walking this way. We ran into each other, and I said, I'm supposed to give you a reading. We just sat on a little patio table outside one of the buildings there. Her daughter came through so beautifully. And oh, by the way, I have my tape recorder, so she didn't miss a word of it. You see? That's a setup. Woohoo! Isn't that neat? Woo yeah. I'm guessing not all setups are as easy or, um, what's the word for it? I'm thinking of difficult situations that are here to help us and here to benefit from us if we let go of the judgment. Does that sound right? Judgment of what? This is bad. What's bad? Exactly. <laughs> Meaning, if we let go of judgment, so pandemic time, if we say this is bad, that I'm locked up. This is bad oh. that the other thing happened. Rather than to, to, to use your language, your vernacular, which I love, and, and, and I'll, I even go with, isn't it cool sometimes if people will, will tolerate that? Isn't it interesting what's going on? Something more Absolutely. than meets the eye is happening. Absolutely. Isn't it interesting? And how can I respond in a way that's going to make something good come of this? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. 
What has been on your mind most lately or what kind of downloads are you getting right now with everything we're going through? That if only people understood that we are not stuck in this reality, that we can find peace instantly by shifting our viewpoint. How many people think they're alone as they're cloistered in their seclusion? How many people are suffering because they don't realize they are both human and souls? I, that's what's going on in my mind. How can I share with more people the tools, the awareness that we can shift our point of view and find peace? But even more importantly right now, it's how many people are only focusing on the negative and butting heads with other people. That's the human way to protect yourself. You focus on the negative when we need to see where we have things in common, where we can be grateful for things that would just shift the whole dynamic we're experiencing now. You have just got a new toad, if I understand right, a new <laughs> tow vehicle for your vehicle. RV. Yeah. And, and I don't remember why it's called a toad, but, but it's called a toad. Because it's toad behind the car. But it's spelled T-O-A-D. Is how Just because that's the way it's said. But fun. it's the toad vehicle behind the RV. Yeah. And your toad, when you parked it in the garage, you showed this online for one of your classes, started to give this holistic 360 degree view of everything. Yeah. It looks like the camera's 20 feet over the car, which is fascinating because it has sensors all the way around the car. It shows you how close you are to everything, the curb, what's behind you, all the way around you, all at once. And to me, I looked at that and I said, but I'm, there is no camera up there, but that's what we can do because we are consciousness in a body. We have sensors all around us we can take that overhead view and even, I've had the experience of it, know what's behind us, all around us, underneath us, over us. Our consciousness is not stuck in here. It's everywhere. How do we then, we're in, we're in a, we're in a sticky widget. There, that's the official term. We're in a sticky widget and it would really help us to be able to get out of the, I can only see with the front camera of the car and get this bigger perspective, going from maybe the human perspective to the soul perspective or the merged right. perspective. How do we begin right. to do that? We get to get into the lucid zone. I found, and I'm teaching this now, three steps are really good. And the, the lucid zone, I draw a heart because the heart is where we join our higher self with the human side. So it's the integration point here. And when you talk about heartbeats, we talk about beats per minute, BPM. Mm -hmm. So this is another acronym. Breathe. When you notice you're off balance, just take one nice deep breath that in which the exhale is longer than the inhale, and you'll immediately drop into a nice alpha brainwave state, much more aware now. Mm -hmm. It feels so good. Then P, and this is really different, and most people don't know this one, is change your posture. Mm. What do you like when you're rushing around the house? Like this. But if you want to be open to spirit, put the shoulders back, open your heart area, and now you're walking with purpose. What point does that make? It reminds you to be M, mindful. Of what? Everything going around you, but not just in the physical reality. What insights are now available to you from guides, from loved ones across the veil, because you took the time to pause and breathe, shift your posture, slow down as you cross the room and say, should I really be going to do this right now, or is there something better I could be doing with my time? You can walk around in the lucid zone Shoulders back in flowing awareness. You see how I'm just kind of tuning into all the senses, physical and soul senses at the same time. That's a practice. It takes training. But all you have to do is set the intention. I'm going to be aware when I'm tight, when I'm rushing, when I'm not in the lucid zone. You know what's so cool to me? Thank you for sharing. And I want to come back to the lucid zone is I have an image in my head of you in your early days in the military. 
and <laughs> you were like this, but at that point, you actually had shoulders back. And oh, yeah. Standing it was, at attention. Yes, it would only have been a slight attunement, a slight change yeah. here. Maybe it was a, would have been a massive leap, but for you to realize, I can use this posture to <laughs> connect with something greater. But the thing is, back then, I had no idea there was something greater. And that's the challenge the mass of humanity faces right now. They don't know that the purpose of doing that is to connect with something greater. Not just to change your posture and slow down. It's to connect your higher self with this human side. Wow, that's when the magic happens. Woohoo! <laughs> Tell us more about how we make this connection. I want people to leave. My, one of my biggest goals that I set intention for each and every day is to be, not to be more connected. I feel like there's no way we could not be connected. We are a spirit. However, to remember that as much as I can. You get taken away to bring it back, get taken away to bring it back. How do we start to stay in this lucid zone? This is, I'm teaching an eight week course now on soul to soul communication with the shift network and uh, people can sign up anytime. They may have missed the first three modules, but it's all recorded. And then we take a two week break over Christmas. So actually the next five weeks are after the new year, which is perfect. But it's, it's the whole thing is about training yourself to recognize who you are mm -hmm. and how to connect. It's not something that we can just learn in an hour, but the most important part is to realize it's possible for anybody to make this connection. And then you just have to change your habits. We can do that through intention saying, hey, what I've been doing till now is not working. But, it, you know, she looks kind of happy and kind of peaceful. If you want some of that, you can get that. We all have this ability. It's 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 a gift that is our, it comes from our soul. When things happen, and I would call this to a cosmic setup, when all of a sudden the, the AV, the technology has been working great, and then something, I'm going to call it a monkey, <laughs> it's put in the wheel, poor monkey, and completely derails our thinking. Is this a perfect opportunity to, I'm going to call it, stop, drop, and connect? Well, I call it dropping into the LZ, like the helicopter term. The, the lucid zone. Yeah, that's exactly it. I led a webinar. I lead monthly webinars and Tuesday night's webinar. Ex my computer froze. We had over a thousand people tuned in and everything froze. And this was a perfect moment to practice that. I just took a breath. I asked the guides, what do I do? And came back on and just took it away again. And I don't think I would have reacted that way in the past. I would have been jittery inside. I would have been frantic. And this time it was just, okay, I know this is a, an opportunity to see, does this work? And it works every time. What did the guides tell you? Were they going, oh, we're just, we're just checking in with you. We want, just want to make sure that you're, what, what were they saying? Because you were set up. Well, no, it, it was because I was showing some really cool slides with the mentoring and I over ta uh, taxed the resources on my computer. <laughs> but they didn't tell me in advance, don't do that. Mm -hmm. So it was just a great test. On top of holding this position, and this to me, it's something that I taught uh, when Jessica and I wrote our books, Barefoot Running and Barefoot Walking. It was standing proud, heart forward. Mm. Is there another easy reminder that we can train ourselves with? Yes. And I don't have it on now because I don't need it anymore. But I used to wear a cheap little ring on my little finger or a little wristband, a little rubber wristband. And I changed, yeah, yeah, I changed the ring from hand to hand or the wristband from arm to arm because if you wear a ring long enough, you don't notice it anymore. But when it's new on your hand, you, it snags your attention. And when that happens, you go, oh, that's my reminder. Have I checked in with spirit? Have I taken that deep breath? Am I in the lucid zone now? And then you switch it to the other hand. You can also just find an app like uh, Remindfulness, one that just rings every so often. And when it does, oh, am I in the lucid zone or have I dropped out? What's really cool here, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I know what you're going to say to this, but... Um, 
almost every teacher that talks about lucid dreaming talks about having a cue that you repeat in the waking world, which then you can repeat in the dream world, which actually gets to like Jung and talking about the dream world is the waking, the waking is the dream. What you're doing is a lucid dreaming exercise, isn't it? Yes, and this world is like a dream, so why wouldn't we? It keeps us awake at the higher level looking down on this this drama we're involved in. How do we begin to um, work on our lives at the higher level? By practicing being in the lucid zone because that's what you're doing. You've stepped out of the drama and when you are conscious, lucid, integrating information coming from your own higher self with your human self, you see things differently. You don't th- take things quite so seriously. Now things here do get serious that we don't get sucked into the drama. You realize that we are method actors who are so doing our job so well of acting out our stories that sometimes we forget that. So by being in the lucid zone, you suddenly take on the role of stage manager. You can still be acting at the same time that you're stage manager. Which role is going to suit you better? The managerial one. Thank you. And, and, and I'm thinking of all the things going on right now, and I want to I spend the last bit that we have together talking about angels, uh, particularly for this time of year. But I'm thinking of your history, your background, political science, military, and, and, then, <laughs> and then this intuitive, heart-based, soul-based, which is everything, so I can't even call that side, but the progression of your life. But you have a very unique perspective on watching everything going on in the world right now. How do you make sense of it the world yes because i've had conversations with source and says that if you picture the sky and everything that passes through it are the clouds the temporary happenings source is the sky all that arises in awareness are the temporary happenings including us the clouds don't harm the sky Source is not affected by anything that happens here. We're condensed versions of that. So yes, at the human level, we are affected by what happens here. But when we step outside of that and know that we are this higher self at various levels, our our personal soul, but that is a direct emanation of the field of consciousness, then It just takes away the fear. There's no fear of death when you communicate with those who've passed all the time because you know there is no death. I don't want my loved ones to suffer if I leave here, but I can't control that. And I know that ultimately these lead to growth. These passings, these tragedies lead to growth for all of us. So how do I deal with the world? I accept it. If there's action I can take, I take it. If not, I trust that all is in perfect order. Ooh, I wish people could could live that way. I've got a vision of Pac-Man, or go with Miss Pac-Man here. And she's got <laughs> on maybe a red bow, like your red dress. And she's going along, and these ghosts show up behind her, and, and she's got to make sure she doesn't get eaten by the ghost. But she's not judging the ghost. She's not worrying about the ghost. She's just doing what she's doing. And when it's over, she goes back to the person who's at the controls until maybe they put a a quarter in and she goes back and learns some more lessons going around (laughs) in that world. Whatever whatever model works for you, Michael. (laughs) So talk to us about angels and particularly this time of the year. And go anywhere you want. What's important? We can see angels with wings, if that's what you were told an angel looks like, but the basic understanding is there is a realm of beings Mm -hmm. who are also emanations of pure consciousness, which is love, and their reality exists to assist us here. So sometimes they'll just show up as light. They pull some strings and know what we need and watch out for us. They don't always step in if we need to learn a lesson but if it will help our souls growth they're there if we ask for help they'll give it as needed just like a little baby that says please pick me up the parents are not going to leave them to suffer so there are absolutely 
intelligent, creative, loving beings who are here to help us if we'll just ask. And many times they step in even when we don't ask. That's the only reason I'm still here with all of the broken yeah. bones that I've had is because they've stepped in. But I've also had discussions after the fact about why those things happened. And actually, my soul one time told me that um, I broke you on the rocks to help shift your path and that that was for your highest good. Yeah, sometimes that's that's a real hard lesson to learn. But again, when you realize that at the soul level, your soul is fine. Then, okay, that's why I pray. I get it, but may my lessons be as painless as possible. My mantra now, ever since that, is kind, gentle, easy, good. I am listening, universe. May I have the yeah. lessons kind, gentle, easy, good. And, and that is what happens when we listen and stop and breathe and be guided. Yeah. Is there a prayer? Uh, wow. Okay. Let's go there. Is there such a thing as a better way to pray? This is tricky because there are no best or betters or shoulds or have tos. It does work to stay in human mode and do beseeching prayer. Oh, do I have an example of that? Please. If you want to hear it. Yes. But help me remember to get back to the other kind of prayer. Not so a problem. This, this woman who I, had, I did not know filled out a form when I had one on my website for doing readings. I now don't take the form because I don't, I, my list was way too long. But she provided a phone number and an email and asked for a reading. I didn't know why. So I wrote back and I said, I'm sorry, my waiting list is just so long. I'm not sure you want to wait. And she, she wrote back and said, please, just put me on the list. And that was the last I heard from her. Later that day, I was having dinner, visited my mom in assisted living with my husband. We're in the big dining room, people all around. I'm mid-bite. And I went to my husband. I said, Ty, I have to go call this woman who emailed me today. This has never happened. Mid-bite. It wasn't like, I'll wait till the end of the meal. I set down my fork, left the dining room, and called her. Little did I know on the other end, when she heard from me that maybe I'll put her on the list, but it's a long wait, she took a picture of her son who had passed. She looked at it, and she said, Universe, we want Suzanne to give us that reading so I can connect with my son. Then she walked into her bedroom, found her husband, said, take my hands. We're going to pray. And she sat down and she said, please, may we have a reading with Suzanne Giesman. Just then the phone rings. She looks down. She turns it to her husband. He almost falls off the bed because it's me. She picks it up, and I said, hello, Colleen, this is Suzanne Giesman. I'm supposed to offer you a reading. See, that's a setup, and that started even before she prayed, but she got her prayer answered on the spot. I have to tell everybody I am not doing readings new from the list now, so please don't everybody start praying. I do have wonderful people to refer, refer people to. In fact, that woman is now a medium, and she's one that I refer people to, but I didn't know her at the time. Very is that fantastic? I, so that's beseeching prayer. The other kind is affirmative prayer. Mm -hmm. And that comes from the awareness that I am a soul. Once you really know that and that we are intimately connected to the field of miracles, to source, you just affirm all is in perfect order. And if it serves the greater good that this or this or this happened, then may it be so. You see? That's a whole different ballgame than I am powerless. I'm asking for something to happen. How do I put this? All is in perfect order, and may it be so. And we're going to hold a paradox here. And I would like things to be better. That human aspect. How do we hold those together? It's not a paradox. That's what evolution is. Source bubbles up as you and as me and as these gorgeous mountains and all that is, and it's beautiful and it's good. 
And evolution means let's take something that's good and make it better. This this evolutionary nudge in all of us to do things better. So there's nothing wrong with asking for or intending that things are better. We know what better feels like because that causes evolution when we follow that path, when we act on the nudges, when we pray for and receive help to make something better. Just like an artist. It has this masterpiece, but I'm just going to add a few touches and maybe even make it better. I like it. I showed up once in uh, Taos, New Mexico with Jessica, my wife. Um, she had gone on a tri- trip to the Southwest, came home. We had been, I think we we're pretty much newlyweds. And she said, um, we're moving to Taos. And then she goes, well, let me clarify. I'm moving to Taos. You can come with me if you'd like. Oh, wow. <laughs> We go down there to scope things out. We end up in a, a, a shopkeeper's um, place in, in the Taos Pueblo. So these ancient thousand-year-old uh, buildings and shops. And his name is Robert Mirabal. He's a two-time Grammy Award-winning musician. And he looks at us at the corner of his eye, and he looks, and he looks, and he goes, you guys are runners, aren't you? You're runners. I know it. Come back here. And in the back, he held up these leather running moccasins that I'd seen in a book over 100 years old, this book. And I'd been looking for these things because we had written, just written the book Barefoot Running. And he goes, I yeah. called you here because I oh. live in a magical world. Oh, my goodness. We, nice. It, it was ooga booga. And he's a dear, dear friend. And we ended up moving for, for a short while down to Taos, New Mexico. But I'm wondering about the mind trip because you and I live there probably more than most. And and I desire to live there all the time. I keep forgetting and coming back and forgetting and coming back that we all live in this magical world. When you do that and you can see this higher perspective, how do you keep things straight? You go to open the fridge and you go, did I want that jelly or was universe telling me you should pull that out? You just flow, just flow with it. We don't have to figure everything out. When you set the intention when you wake up in the morning that I will be guided, I will remain as lucid as I'm able to, knowing that it is all being guided at another level anyway, then don't worry about it. Just appreciate the the, the miracles as they unfold. The reason more people aren't having these experiences is because we're evolving into that. And you and I are or just maybe the tip of the spear that's saying, come along, we can all have this. And someday, de- generations ahead, it will. these kind of miracles will be commonplace and accepted. And that's when we will have really evolved and more people will not be butting heads and we won't need such lessons. Yeah. We'll respond to them differently. Well, I'm starting to go into tears right now and I'm trying to ask myself why. And, and I, I think there's both... Um, a truth coming out and a collective sadness and the collective (laughs) sadness is not remembering this connection each and every moment or (laughs) as as the expression goes you know uh what is it pains required sufferings offer uh, optional when we recognize what's really going on that suffering goes away doesn't it absolutely yes yeah so Let's say during this time you're really struggling, you're suffering, there's who knows what, you've lost your home, a loved one is on the edge of passing away. How do we connect or what do we do? What, what would you do personally in connecting with the angels? Well, rewind and listen to this program again. We've given lots of tools exactly for doing that and it's just a matter of setting the intention, I'm going to live my life that way and keep practicing this until it becomes my way of life. And remember, I said it at the beginning, if you think there's a problem, you're coming at that from the human viewpoint. At the soul level, there is no problem. It's just an opportunity now. You shift your perspective and it puts things into perspective. Isn't that interesting? Boy, I took on a tough role this time. Oh, I'm really facing a challenge now. How are we going to make that easier? Now you're coming from a perspective of love as well. Love over fear. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Nurture yourself. Get out and put that nice blanket around you and say, it is all right at another level. Boy. What was I thinking when I took on this role? 
<laughs> I had a, uh, a past life regression, uh, actually a, a series of them with one of the people trained directly by Dolores Cannon years ago. And I had had a series of 36 accidents and broken bones and hospitalizations. And what she showed me in this session was me kind of around the table with the elders uh, on the other side of the veil. And I spoke to this one uh, main elder and, and I said, um, for my evolution, give me the works. And he oh, said, yeah. no, 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 no. You don't want that, Michael. Yeah, well, you and, must not have listened. <laughs> no, I, I, I had a lot of, uh, uh, we'll say chutzpah. And, and I said, no, give me the works. And so for people who are going through the works right now, can we renegotiate this? Well, you could, but when you realize you asked for it and you are just going to go to the head of the class when you pass, then you <laughs> apply these tools that we've been talking about. It's funny, my, my uh, December mentor, monthly mentoring, that's, that video, I know you saw it, is now in the archives. Anybody can watch it. There's a, a drawing in there of the, the souls sitting around that table looking into this holographic globe down on us here mm -hmm. and watching. And, and I like to joke, like, they're like pass the popcorn. This one's going to be good, you know. <laughs> and, and I don't mean to take people's suffering lightly, but the, when you realize that at some level we, we ask to be challenged, it, it puts things in perspective. I like to go to Joseph Campbell during this time, which is if you can watch your life as the arc, as the hero's journey, then when you hit that dark night of the soul, we'll use your language here. Isn't that interesting? It's about to get really cool. I'm, I'm past the 20 minute left mark in the movie. Something yeah. really great's going to come out of this. It's called a breakthrough. A breakthrough. Yeah, and it doesn't come easy, but when you have it, Man, everything changes. Do we have guardian angels by our sides to help us get through these breakthrough experiences? Yes, that's what we were saying earlier. Just ask. You have to trust. Even if you think it's total baloney, what we've been talking about, ask. And ask some allegedly fictitious guardian angel that's here. But do it with some modicum of hope that maybe it's real. And then watch what happens. Is there a specific message guides and angels are trying to get through at this time? You are so very loved. You're not alone. It's the eternal message. Wow, we do so many silly things and we, f we become fearful and we cry and we suffer because we think we have to do this alone and we could not possibly be more loved, more helped. I get daily messages that I post at dailyway.org and three times in the last week, the message has included the fact that we have the arms of angels wrapped around us. If only we knew that. It's a, it's a metaphor, but it's this, this assistance that's right here. See, that to me man, sounds really cool in that well, I'm, I, I'm in this beautiful retreat center of a home right now, and I'm not supposed to go out and mingle with anybody right now. But I can mingle even more on the inside, can't I? I can yes. use this for awesomeness. Absolutely. And I hope more people do as a result of your efforts. Thank yeah. you. And yours. Where can people go to check out? You, you, you mentioned so many things. All of your goodness, Suzanne. SuzanneKeesman.com. Go right down to the bottom of the page because in the footer is just everything that's there. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Where do people, because we, we have so much on our Inspire Nation University page, where is the simplest entry point for people to start? Or do you want them to go there, take a deep breath, pause? And ask. <laughs> yeah, ask. Yeah. They'll be drawn to something. It's laid out in a way that, that just draws you in and your heart will say, oh, I want to see that. I want to know what that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, but here's a great place to start. Amazon Prime is now running the documentary of my story, how I went from Navy commander to this work. And it's a beautiful 40-minute documentary that will at least open up your mind to, wow, this really is real. Yeah. I want to check that out. Oh, yeah, I, I know we, we discussed it a, a bit on the last uh, show, but I want to check that out. If you oh. look, oh, oh, go for it. 
But if people are not in the U.S. or the U.K. and don't have Amazon Prime, the same documentary is on YouTube. Just look for Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Beautiful. If we were, how many years has it been since you had your breakthrough? Ooh, I don't know, 2006, 2008, 12 years. All right. I know that you're on an evolution that is, that is not linear. It's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you see in the last few years or going back all the way 12, how much have you changed and what's going on in your growth right now? Oh, it's, it's just a tremendous change. And I get emails all the time, just got one this week that says, I've watched you for years and just in the last year or two, you've just had this whole new level of peace and love. And I have felt that way all along the journey, but, but they're right, it is, it's like that. But I want that for everybody and it's available. It's a choice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it choice is every moment. A choice to believe, a choice to trust, a choice to follow that nudge and go here and look at that and watch that video and read that book and go into meditation and ask that question. Choices, choices, choices. So how do you know what to do? You breathe, throw your shoulders back, and ask and listen and act. Woohoo! <laughs> Before I let you go, you had prepared a whole bunch of stories on setups beforehand. Is there any one last story that you want to share with people? Just to show you how our loved ones who have passed, especially at the holiday season, are still with us, still guiding us. One of my favorites is my husband and I were traveling cross country in our RV. We do it every year. We were in the middle, middle of the country. And I get an email from a man who says, Suzanne, I know you live at the time in Florida. I'm going to be in Florida on these dates. I have a daughter across the veil who I would love to see if you could connect with her. Could you do a reading for me on those specific dates? And he included his phone number. His email address, of course, was there. And I looked at the calendar and I thought, darn, we're not going to be back in Florida then. And then I looked at the area code and this voice said, find out where that area code is. And I looked it up, and it was Kansas City. I said, Ty, aren't we staying in Kansas City tonight? He said, yes. So I pick up the phone, and I called the man. He said he was sitting in his doctor's office, and he sees this call and he, from Florida, but it was just my cell phone. He picks it up, and I said, Jeff, this is Suzanne Giesman. I'd like to do that reading for you tomorrow morning. He says, but I won't be in Florida tomorrow morning. I said, no, but I'll be in Kansas City and he came to my RV to the campground and his daughter had the most beautiful messages for him and evidence. You can see that was a setup. I mean, she could see, knew where I was. So where does dad get the thought to reach out then and there, right? And what made me look up that area code then and there? We are being guided. Those at the higher realm see things we don't we just have to trust and follow those nudges. Thank you. And our loved ones, therefore, are always on the other side, cheering us on, dropping us tokens, guiding us on our way. Believe it. It is truth. Capital T. Woohoo! Woo and speaking of capital T, Ty is a really good sport, isn't he? Oh, my gosh. My husband is the best. This is his birthday. And he said, do that interview with Michael. Go ahead, sweetheart. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Any last words of wisdom you want to share with people? And then let's get you to Ty. Oh, thank you. Just love each other with all your heart. Step out of the I have to be right zone and just be the soul you are and just allow everybody to have their unique viewpoint on the world. And then the heart is the mediator. What does a mediator do? Seeks peace through suggestions and listening to both sides. That's what the heart wants to do. You gotta get out of the head and be the mediator that we came here to be. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Suzanne. This has been fantastic. Thank you, Michael. I love sharing your energy. It, it so goes both ways. Big, big, big angel hug then. Ooh. <laughs> oh my God, that is, <laughs> that is awesome. Every yeah. every woman, at least, needs an angelic dress like that yeah. to remind. That is just amazing. <laughs>
Thank you. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, pause, drop in, plug in, know that you are surrounded by love, that you are love, that you came from love, that you couldn't be anything other than love. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest interview as much as I did. For more on how you can up-level your life, click on the links below for our mini masterclasses, for our boot camps, and for a very limited availability one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Be sure to give this a huge thumbs up if you like this, leave your comments below, and you can check out more amazing videos here and here. Love you guys so, so much. Shine bright. Woohoo!